Now, I've been very curious about why I feel so much better when I drink carbonated water versus regular water. And I didn't know the answer until very recently. So I'm going to share this with you, as well as some other fascinating things related to CO2, carbon dioxide. So whether you're drinking soda water, club water, seltzer water, LaCroix, or any type of carbonated water, this relates to CO2, because the way they carbonate it is by adding this gas, CO2, into the water, which does make it slightly acidic because it turns into carbonic acid, unless it's stored a little bit differently as these bicarbonates in water. But regardless of that, when I drink carbonated water, I just feel more hydrated, my digestion's better, and I just I feel better. I feel more relaxed when I drink carbonated water. So if you happen to see some other videos related to carbon dioxide, I mentioned this one effect called the Bohr effect, B-O-H-R. That is a condition that relates to CO2. In other words, for oxygen to be absorbed into your cells, into the tissues, it takes CO2, which is very counterintuitive. You would think, logically, if you got more air, okay, less CO2, you would have more oxygen, but that's not true. It takes that CO2 to slightly adjust the pH and drop it a little bit and make it slightly more acidic to allow the oxygen to be released. And this is why if you hyperventilate in a panic attack, you're getting too much O2 and not enough CO2 and uh, you can't breathe, right? And, and then you start breathing in a paper bag and you get more CO2 and now you can breathe. In fact, you can actually create a hypoxic state that is a state of lowered oxygen by depriving the tissues of CO2, which is very interesting. Because normally you would think hypoxia, low oxygen, means too much CO2, which can occur, but you can also create that same situation with not enough CO2. So CO2 is really essential in the homeostasis of oxygen absorption. Now, in Europe, they actually have these sauna baths um, that are carbonated. They call them carbonated spas or baths, where they pump the CO2 into this water. And apparently, it's great for all sorts of circulatory problems, like problems with your vascular system, uh, especially something called peripheral vascular disorders. They even use it for diabetic wounds and to decrease the rate of getting an amputation where they cut off the feet. I mean, it can actually improve that by increasing microvascular circulation. So basically, CO2 increases blood flow. It's even used as the therapy after someone gets a stroke and they have this hypoxic low oxygen state because the CO2 helps that oxygen go deep into the cells. Now, I could not find any research on drinking carbonated water, okay, in that relating to an improved health. But I have found parallel research on all the things I'm talking about, and I'll include that down below. And one study I found there was a significant increase in the parasympathetic nervous system activation by increasing CO2. That's the system that counters the flight or fight mode. It's the system that helps your healing and your digestion and your ability to sleep. And the device they use to measure the parasympathetic is what I used in my practice, which is a technology called heart rate variability. Let's take a look at some other things that I found related to this. If you take a normal cell inside, and then you take a cancer cell, and we look at the pH of each one. The cancer cell actually is more alkaline. Now, the outside of the cell is more acidic because of all the byproducts from lactic acid, things like that. But the inside of the cell is more alkaline than a normal cell, which is very interesting, especially as it relates to CO2. And I couldn't find any information on this, but think about this. When you deprive a tissue of CO2, you actually can develop alkalosis. That is a state of being too alkaline. So without that CO2 turning into carbonic acid, you can develop an overly alkaline state. And then I wanted to figure out, is there any relationship or any significant improvement in shrinking tumors or stopping the spread of cancer by increasing CO2? And I found a bunch of research, which is also very interesting, which I'll include down below. So apparently CO2 is a significant, potent, anti-tumor gas. It has the ability to inhibit metastasis, which is interesting, as well as inducing apoptosis, which causes the cancer cells to commit suicide. It also inhibits this very interesting gene that's involved in this switching mechanism between a normal cell and it turning into cancer. 
That gene is called HIF-alpha, which is involved in hypoxia. Now, this probably doesn't make sense unless you understand that CO2 allows oxygen to go into the tissues. And as bad as hypoxia is, it can be created by a lowered amount of CO2, as well as lowered oxygen levels, but also there's this CO2 connection that is very interesting. I had this thing in my mind where if we just flood the body with oxygen, right, we'll be able to kill the cancer and we could prevent cancer, but apparently the CO2 is another key factor that we cannot ignore. Like even in a thunderstorm, um, you can probably breathe better. And if you ever wanted to know why, well, apparently there's a lot more CO2 in the air after a thunderstorm than there is when there's not a thunderstorm going on. Also, you'll actually get more oxygen into your tissues if you breathe through your nose, not your mouth, when you're sleeping, as well as when you exercise. There's another interesting natural bath, like the springs, if you go to the hot springs. And at first we might think there's a lot of minerals involved that, that are helping us, but guess what? There's a significant amount of CO2 in hot springs, which could be the reason why uh, you feel better and you're more relaxed. Now, they're even using CO2 in various creams for um, hydration to your skin and better circulation and blood flow, which is another interesting uh, piece of this puzzle. And the last point about the CO2 is that CO2 apparently is a potent anti-inflammatory. So I just wanted to increase your awareness on the CO2, this carbon dioxide thing, as well as carbonated water. And this could be the reason, which I think it is, of why you may feel better if you consume more carbonated water. And what I have is I have a little carbonated machine that makes my water carbonated. So I take my spring water and I carbonate it, and that's what I drink. But since we're on the topic of water, if you haven't seen this video, I think you should watch it. There's definitely more information to be known about water. And I put it up right here. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before